And welcome back, everyone. It's really been a long time, but welcome back to another interview here on Chucky's Talk Show. Like I said, it's been a long time since you have done one of these episodes. <coughs> Excuse me. But it's great to be back. Hope you guys really enjoying all the amazing content and glad that the show is getting back on track. So as you may know, to introduce myself, my name is Charles Tucker. I am the host of Chucky's Talk Show and the creator of Constitution Entertainment. As of course, I have my amazing, lovely <clears throat> collection behind me. And today, on today's interview, I actually going to be talking to a fan all the way from Illinois. A uh, little fun fact: he is the one responsible for sending me. If I can get this right here without having a trouble mess, uh, these amazing Jasper Dalton cups. If you haven't seen these videos for a while, see these cuts in the videos for quite a while. And as you guys may know, uh, Jasper is one of my <clears throat> absolute favorite characters. Not only that, but he also have an animatronic Jasper, a Raton, and new Rockafire, a Missy Duke in a Looney Bird head. Plus, amazing collection as well. You might know him on Instagram because he does a lot of live streams here and there. And stuff, but that's enough now. Let's get on to the questions. Let's get welcome my guest all the way from Illinois, Jacob Goldberg. Hey, it's Jacob Goldberg. Hello. Hello, Jacob. Welcome to the show. I know we've been playing on this for quite a while. Yes, thank you for having me. No problem. I see you got the hound dog Jasper and of course rat tone in the background now, I, let me ask why why is jasper sleeping on the job and and rat tone is awake on the job mm, i mean jasper he's he's a good sleeper ah, okay i got gotcha. you i got gotcha. you and plus uh, in the other room you got missy duke and looney bird yes and sun in the sun right i forgot to mention that in the in the whole intro that you got the sun as well so yeah they're all they're all back there in um the, the junkyard Ah, oh, gotcha. All right. Uh, so I know we're going to be talking about the animatronics uh, a lot, but before we get into that, first things first, let's talk about how you got interested in all these funny, silly robots. Well, it started out um, with childhood. Um, I used to go to showbiz. My dad used to take me to showbiz a lot on Sundays. Um, so I used to enjoy that. Um, so originally grew up with the Rock of Fire, um, and that was very short lived. And then uh, constant beautification happened. Uh, fortunately, I did have another neighborhood Rock of Fire location. I went to Chimpy's Pizza Safari a lot. Oh, yes. Um, so I still got kind of my healthy dose of Rock of Fire after constant beautification. Um, and then. Um, Teen years came along and didn't really um, go to that because, you know, just wasn't a cool thing to do. Um, and then uh, adult years um, kind of rediscovered uh, everything just around the time that Joby'sPizza.com was getting, you know, real popular, um, 99, 2000. And um kind of the the rest is history right. um but, oh, that's interesting i no i knew the part about you going to chippy's uh piece of safari seeing the rock of fire but i never thought as a young kid you actually went to rock of fire and you saw not only the rock of fire which i'm like you said it was short-lived so i'm guessing like what 1990 92-ish 19 um i mean the the earliest i can remember i went um, you know, in 89, 90. So I remember. He was on the CU air then. Yep. So I remember like Red Vest Chuck would come out um, and, you know, be around the Rock of Fire. So I, I remember that kind of transition period. And yes, I was one of those kids who, those mortified children who walked into my local showbiz and like expecting to see the rock fire explosion and they weren't there yeah i i mean it's a, it's a way sad to hear but it's like also surprising that you along with many other people like travis as he explained how his uh feelings was towards you know contribution he didn't like the much of a big band in those times you know, you know as, 
like I said, it's sad, but it's also surprising too that there's a lot of contributions uh, of Rockefeller lovers that have seen the Rockefeller and saw what has happened to them during that time. It's, it's shocking. I think this is like the first time in forever in the show, in the way, as soon as we can get Travis on, I know he's always like busy and stuff, that we have to hear someone experience what their uh, thoughts was during the CU era. Yeah, for me, because um, I've always been a very detail-oriented person, so it was kind of comparing as to what the old setup was versus what the new setup was, and kind of, because I mean, I knew it was, you know, based off of the rock fire explosion. Um, you know, it's just, it, it didn't quite click, you know, it's like, okay, you know, it's this new band, um, but kind of seeing, you know, because I knew, like, you know, front and center, you know, the difference, you know, fats, the gorilla turned into this, this purple thing. Um, so, you know, it, it just, it was interesting to just kind of see the different nuances of kind of old versus new, what was the same, what was different. Right, 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 right. I totally get it. And for, for me, who didn't grow up during that era of the time, because I was around when the Studio C was out and, you know, Studio C era, like hearing you guys' story, just like, man, I wish I was back in time here in those days. Like, I wish I could experience what you guys went through. Now it's like, we got the home videos, the pictures, and some of our family members can even tell us like how it was. Some would remember, some wouldn't remember. Like my mom, she remembers going to showbiz and seeing the Rock of Fire, but she never like, never told me about stories how it was during the CU time. Which, you know, yeah. like, it's uh, sad, but it's shocking too to hear like your guys depth, in depth, of, like how you remember it, which make us like um, younger, generation fans like man I wish we went back in time and actually experienced that we wish what you guys have like you guys have the ball crawl back then you guys have Pac-Man Galaga like the stuff nowadays in the stores is kind of different and two-ish and it's like you know yeah I'll tell you what if if I uh can take you it's closed now but if I can take you to my local showbiz Chuck I can show you where all those old games used to be because I remember I remember playing them <laughs> right, gotcha, gotcha. All right, um, so let, let's discuss about the whole uh, the whole collecting thing with the animatronics. How did that all like started? And correct me if I'm wrong, but did your Jasper have like an an interesting type history behind himself? Um, he does have an interesting type history. So, um, the one thing that kind of it's interesting so i mean these guys like i don't actively go out and find try to find these guys so these guys kind of find me oh. so I, so i just happen to be kind of in the right place at the right time um kind of in the right conversation um and so i got jasper back in 2015 Wow. Um, so he was, he's, he had had a few different homes at the time, but um, this one just happened to come from uh, San Jose. So the, the three story, San oh, Jose. Like the Tilly Road. Tilly Road. Yeah. By the way, he parked his car sideways and he didn't want to scratch. Chrome was shining bright, you could see that car at night. Let's go for a ride. No, we got nothing to lose. It was Saturday night. The car was out of sight. He says, Come on, let's go cruise. We should have closed our eyes when you drove us to the place where your band plays for free. Cause we felt a little chill. We heard the pound and beat. It was the happening place to be. Believe it or not. Saturday night, the car was out of sight. So I said, Chuck, have you got enough gas? Oh, yeah. So that, that, that is the location, yes. Um, 
And so I didn't actually know that that was the case until later, until we had kind of dug up some pictures um, and noticed some key similarities between when uh, he was in service, you know, versus what he looked like now when I had him. Um, so we, we discovered through um, talking to people and the pictures that that's, that was the Jasper that um, was at that store. And so um, it, it's pretty cool. I mean, you know, it, it definitely gives him a story. Yeah. Um, and Breton's got a kind of an interesting story too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he was, um, at least the cosmetics were um, shipped in from Mexico. So, and as far as I know, I mean, he's one of a kind. Yeah, I still remember that day, like April 1st, he was like doing this slow stream and next thing you know, this interesting character just taken to Jasper's spot and started playing the Madame Link, uh, which now is actually found, but the Madame Link, uh, love of, uh, the Tunnel of Love segment, uh, so the Spanish version, yeah, the Spanish version. Yeah, I had no idea that live stream was going to be so crowded, so there, there were a lot of people who came and checked out that live stream so that was really that was just supposed to be kind of a just a fun little joke but um it ended up being kind of cool right and then i think raton stayed like for a few while Fuck, I yeah he he stayed by popular demand <laughs> yeah so. yeah that was that was when i was like yeah get that get off the rap we i need the dog because that's the only time i i needed him um, Damon had scheduled a visit to the dog den and he had demanded that Rakan stay. Oh yes, yes. I'm gonna I'm get to, to Dave Damon in a bit. I, I, I remember he came down there. I'm gonna get to that in a bit because uh, I'll get to that later on too. I, I'm still kind of shocked. I know I uh, definitely do got a visit sometime down there. Oh, you gotta come. I know. Yes, I know. <laughs> but, um, but with, but the next question is with the dog then, uh, how did the name became like how did you came up with the name Jasper's dog then? Well, there's kind of a an interesting little story behind that. So, um, you know, everybody's kind of got you know their their name that they've coined. Um, so originally, even earlier than when I'd gotten Jasper, I had originally. Um, had a, a deal for a duke mm -hmm. um, that ended up falling through. So the original the original name was supposed to be Duke's Dog Den. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so that deal had fallen through. And then years later, um, I had kind of, you know, I I've pretty much all but forgotten the name. But then when I was trying to think of a name, um, the name Dog Den kind of came back into my mind and I liked it. So, um, and it was actually Dog Den was a, it was, wasn't the name of a restaurant, but there was, there was something close and I could never remember the name. It was a hot dog place uh, and I could never remember the actual name of the, of the restaurant. So I'd always call it, um, I'd always call it Dog Den, and it totally wasn't the name. So, <laughs> so originally Duke's Dog Den came it was the kind of the inside joke of this hot dog place mm -hmm. that I could never remember the actual name of. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was like a. Um, yeah. So Dog Den just kind of fit, and then getting Duke, you know, just helps the situation. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, that's interesting. I always knew where the name came from. I never came from Hot Dog Place. Yeah, I mean, hot, the Hot Dog Place that actually wasn't, because that wasn't the actual name, but... Um, and then they closed, too. I just I just went by there, and they, that restaurant closed. Nice. That sucked. That one's very tough. So, uh, 
You know, speaking of which now uh, of Duke, I think it's now to turn over to the new Rock the Fire explosion or the Rock the Fire explosion. As you said, you went to show as a kid, saw the Rock the Fire around 89, went to Chibi's piece of uh, Safari. Let me ask you, how was the experience seeing uh, the Rock the Fire again during those times when you found out about it? Like, how was excited was up for you to see them again in person? I mean, I love going to Tempe's. Um, and I mean, anytime, even now that I get to go see, you know, any rock fire explosion, you know, no matter where they are, is, you know, is definitely a treat. Um, so that show just, in my mind, just never gets old. Right. So I could just sit and watch them for hours on end. Because you went to Chimpies, you went to Goofy Guys, you went to the Smitties. Basically, you went on. I've been around, yeah. You've been around, yeah. You've been to Billy Vaughn, you've been to Rockafire. You went to Rockafire Pizza? I, you know what? I never made it to Rockafire Pizza, oh, unfortunately. Wow. I don't think you went to the bar either, huh? Or... I was close, but no. Oh, okay. Um, um, through a few failed um, kind of back and forth, um, I never got to make it to uh, to the bar. Wow. What about Shelby's Pieces, though? Shelby's Pizza Zone also did not make it. Yeah. So there was actually one place that you did saw the Rock Fire, but there wasn't like the original three stage as we know and love today, but they were like the different type of size Rock Fire and they were called the new Rock Fire. During yes. the time you went, they were in poor condition and this is where there was like showing their rage and stuff. And you know the story already how that went, but you went to Odyssey Fun World. I can't remember yeah. which one you went to because your animatronics went to different or came from different parts. Uh, but um, how was it seeing the Odyssey Fun World animatronics? Do you like have any memories of watching them? Oh yeah. Um, so let's see. Early two thousand is when I I um, went there, um, and it was it was very cool because. Um, you know, you, you see this stuff on the internet, um, and then it's like, all of a sudden, then, you know, you see, you know, you see it for real. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, those, those characters still, you know, they're very cool. Um, you know, it's, it's a different concept, but it's still um, in its own right. You know, it's very cool to see. So he explained to us where each location, uh, each character in the other room came from. Yeah. Um, so the window loony came from the Naperville location, and then Mitzi and Duke came from Tinley Park. Nice. And I think, but you could prove me wrong too. I think the Tilly Park location barely had the Duke functioning a lot from looking at. Her. Um. Tinley Park was refurbished back in 2009, if I remember correctly. Um, and they had gotten a digital computer system um, that played every few minutes. And I think kind of the wear and tear, um, those parts are definitely more delicate um you know the one thing i mean if you've never seen an actual rocket fire explosion character like the classic show those those characters are built like tanks um so they are i mean they're all aluminum um and they are heavy and they are just very and they're kind of very monotonous in every sense of the word but um the new rock of fire now they're not light by any means um but they do have far more plastic and delicate parts um that are more prone to failing earlier in their lifespan um so um it, it is difficult when the you know the manufacturer um 
is no longer providing the correct um, support for such a character um, that is more delicate and for parts that are known to fail earlier in their lifespan. Um, so it is it is hard um, as you're playing these shows over and over and over and stuff breaks and then you gotta fix it and then you run out of parts and then you gotta go you know create these parts yourself um and with limited knowledge it was it just ended up being um more than they wanted um so they went and uh sold Gotcha, gotcha. So, so how you guys got the word that uh, Tilly and Naperville was getting like so long ago? Like, I mean, you don't have to explain everything, but just like a brief story, like. Well, funny story. So they, I guess they had posted on like Facebook or somewhere in social media that there was a post mm-hmm. um, of which I did not see. Um, I had got a call. Um, saying, hey, these characters are for sale. A bunch of us are going in on it. We, you know, would you be interested? And originally I was, I had said, no, no, I'm not interested. Um, I am, you know, attempting to save money. I don't have the space. I still don't have the space. Nice. Um, <laughs> but um, so there, there was like a, a real good, like two, two and a half hours. But I was like, no, no, I'm not doing it. Um, and then, um, you know, when you see on TV where it's like, you cut to the next scene and it's like, yeah, you know, I'm absolutely not going to do this. And then you're in an office signing paperwork saying, I can't believe I'm doing this. Yeah. Um, so I, I was kind of the local contact. So I, I'm the one who got to sign the paperwork. So I was the one that promised that none of us were going to fall or get hurt. And if we did, they weren't responsible. Um, and um, and then forking over the money. Right. So, um, which we all got to Odyssey surprisingly fast. Huh. Um, so... I didn't think who we were going to be so organized on that, but we were. Um, and so that that's kind of the brief story on how that happened. So do you, like, have any regrets after that? No, or, like, any regrets buying those characters? Like you say, you still have enough space. So you just look back at it every time you walk in or you do a live stream, like, man, I can't believe I actually said no on the first time, or can't believe I buy these characters. Like, do you have, like, any regrets for it? Um... I mean, anybody who has anything um, expensive, um, you know, these characters are like an old car, right? Uh, you know, and a lot of these old cars, you'll find that, you know, they're always either on a lift or on blocks, you know, something's always breaking. Um, So do I regret buying the characters? Um, No, the, I mean, the adult side of me, um, says that, you know, I mean, it was, it, it's an interesting investment. So, um, I mean, for anybody who is just getting into this, um, mm-hmm. this is not a cheap hobby right. um, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so this is th- th- not definitely not a cheap hobby. So, um, you know, there's always, there's always stuff like in particular, there's one cylinder right now on duke that is uh at the end of its lifespan and um and which i have to replace and i'm in the process of getting um you know kind of my act together on that trying to get that cylinder um but i can tell you that it's probably not going to be on the cheap side to get this particular cylinder gotcha gotcha all right well uh, thank you for giving me that uh, answer on Hammertron and maintenance. And I can tell from your experience of working with these guys, it's a little lot of hard work. Uh, a lot of hard work. I guess you kind of lose sleep uh, from it. Well, certainly it's, it's an undertaking sometimes. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, 
let's continue on now. I've noticed, you know, a lot of visitors do come for the Dalton uh, time in and time out. Um, for like people who are like non type showbiz fans, have you ever had the experience of people who are like non showbiz Chuck E. Cheese fans come visit the Din? Uh, sometimes, yeah. And what's their like first reaction when they hear like you got an animatronic in your own home and stuff? Um, it's definitely not something that uh, people hear every day. So um, it's uh, it's interesting. You, you know, each person kind of reacts differently. And from here into, as you just said earlier, that Damon from Smitty Super Service Station, who I also need to come down and visit, had checked it out, the dog in. So how did that whole plan was set up? Um, he was in town. I don't remember why he was in town, but he was here. Um, he was here with his kids and uh, set up a day where uh, he came with his kids and we watched shows and talked and had, we had a lot of fun. Mm. Nice. We went to Volo. We went to Volo that day too. Oh, Volo Auto Museum! Right, that's right. You actually went to the Volo Auto Museum as well. Uh, when I asked, how was that experience for you, seeing the old animatronics like the King, the King Cat, the Beagles, little shavers? Um, Volo is is a very cool place to visit. Um, so animatronics are not just every everywhere you look there's something cool to see so right. um <clears throat> if you have not been to volo um you know definitely plan six hours out of your day go i would highly encourage it you will not be disappointed it is very cool it's a very cool place yeah i've been hearing a lot about it uh especially ever since they brought back the or brought in the beagles as well and then of course little shavers have been recently well not recently found but uh in a way have been found and now they're at their home in uh photo auto museum i definitely would definitely i recommend taking the trip there uh, but seeing those animatronics for the first time in your life how did you like felt well not like basically i'll say like the little shavers because they have been around for quite some time for seeing them for the first time how was it to you oh it was very cool um, so I had seen them <clears throat> getting set up, um, cause I was there, um, during COVID, during lockdown, uh, for something. So, um, so I had seen them kind of behind the scenes, um, but it, it was very cool to see them, you know, cause all we've seen are pictures. Right. <laughs> um, you know just the the very few pictures that we do have of them so to see them in real life in person um is uh it's very it's very 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 um you know interesting to you know just to see something that you've seen all your life in a picture <laughs> right to you know be you know live right before your eyes mm -hmm. And uh, it's like a one-time thing that like you never just get away. So, well, I mean, it, it, yeah, but I mean, they, you can see them anytime you go. True, true, true. Like Jacob recommending, go visit the Baltimore well, Museum. If you're in the Illinois area, go definitely check it out. They got good pizza too. <laughs> definitely go check it out. I don't, now I need to make a booking reservation for it now. <laughs> So, and you know, it's just a shameless plug. They do have their ice cream parlor too now. Their Emporium. Mm. So you can go get ice cream, see the Beagles or the Shavers. Um, you can see the Beagles too, but right. um, you can specifically go get ice cream and see the Shavers and have yourself some pizza and very cool. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, you know, also too, I had noticed that um, yeah, I went to like several events, not like only uh, like seeing the Rock of Fire and stuff, not just like at the convention, like Billy Boss convention, Goofy Guys Fun and stuff. Uh, I know we almost tried to meet like two times or three LGs, and it was uh, during Chucky Con. And I know I almost went uh, during the time in Texas during 2018, 2019, could have went. Then when I heard the 2021 was going to be in Chicago, I was like, oh, yeah, definitely got to go because, you know, the location's there. We're going to 
go see and stuff but uh how how was the experience during that time with your um with the relationship with the team and all with uh with the chucky con staff and all the fans there um chucky con is always uh it's always a very special time um it's always so much fun to get everybody together and to you know to meet the faces um that really you just you see online um so and for you know for many people that is their you know that is their first time you know seeing um you know uh, any of their friends um in, in in person so it is always an extremely magical time to um to be at one of those events right do you have like any favorite particular live show or particular skit you had done i mean you had done the wii you had done that one skit with the ball uh ball crawl about the part where uh i can't remember it right now it's like one of the guys in the background saying hey buddy we're like closing in a few minutes and then you say like what do you mean we're closing and like do you have any favorite moments or like any favorite live show or like countdown you was a part of or the staff um probably just kind of those spontaneous moments um that you know that aren't planned um that uh I, yeah i mean there's there's so many highlights um with chucky con um i mean i can go on and on and on um but Ch you know chucky con or i mean any any convention any fan gathering um is always it's always a treat right 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 you know uh just seeing how you guys is having fun and all was just totally amazing like you know makes us all want to just go and take the time out it's like escape from reality in a way it's like escape from reality and just uh communicate with every fan uh-huh right gotcha gotcha now, you know, uh, I'll continue on with uh, conventions, of course. I know you haven't went to the previous one, but uh, for the first one, you went to the Billy Bob's Wonderland convention. Yes, I did. Of course, for those who have known, Braylon has done an excellent job restoring the characters from their previous bad of runs and stuff. But how, how was it for you seeing them fully getting back into the shape that they originally was? and seeing everybody there. Well, I've been going to Billy Bob's for a while. Um, so, um, so Billy Bob's was one of my first uh, road trips out of high school. <laughs> um, and um, to see those characters fully restored um, is, you know, an, an absolute, you know, magical experience um to see how they were to how they are now um so hats off to braylon uh you know credit where credit is due uh braylon did a you know and continues to do a you know a very good job um right. and you can definitely tell that he's got a passion uh for those characters and so you know i'm glad that somebody does because those characters needed some love um so yeah, so Braylon, uh, continue doing what you're doing. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a good job. Right, right, I agree with you. It's a passion, that's the thing. That's what Molly Man is about with some like animatronic holders. I mean, look at you, you got Raton, you got Jasper, you got the new Rock of Fire. You know, like you said, Duke is having some issues, but you have the passion to take the time out to fix them, which, you know, it's a thing and nowadays with some stores just like some of them just really don't have the time to put their knees and efforts into it Wait. so yeah and yeah um but yeah i mean it, it takes a special person to um to get those characters in the shape you know especially something like billy bob's mm -hmm. um so and uh and braylon is definitely that special person true 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 and braylon do watch and keep up the deal where you gotta right feature ahead of you with the brand honestly man proud of you very much so um so let, let's just continue on now with with uh the programming and stuff i know you guys use program blue for the whole system and all and i know you do live streams all the time and stuff so 
Um, and of course, you're testing out some new stuff right now with the two characters in the back uh, with some new programming. So how's that coming along with the program Blue and everything with the new uh, data programming with original stuff? Um, you know, Program Blue is just kind of this ever-evolving, um, you know, fan-created software. And, um, you know, I've seen some some things, uh, you know, just some magical things with Program Blue, um, especially um, some of these other fans uh, blind pro being able to blind program. Um, some of these kids just nailing the drums. Um, and, you know, they're, they're just doing it. They're looking at lights and they're just, you know, we, we play these shows back and like, I can't do that. <laughs> you know, if I'm, if I'm um, programming something, I gotta be like right there. Right. Um, so um, definitely hats off to uh, those blind programmers out there. Right. Do you have any favorite particular show that you love playing on the characters, whether it's Raton, Jasper, or the Rockfire characters, like right on the stream or just not on stream? Oh, man. <clears throat> I have so many favorites. Yeah. Um, you know, and, you know, each song, you know, there's there's usually a, a reason why it's my favorite, some kind of a memory or lyrics or, um, you know, some kind of a story. Yeah. Um, as to you know why that song is magical but i mean they're all they're all magical you know there's these characters and you know they get brought to life by this software and definitely you know my particular favorite out of every one of them oh i, I think i know what show you like <laughs> it's like a few minutes to like froze it and it's like okay yeah you got a you got a couple of shows that you request on yeah. my live streams. Yeah, a couple. Yeah, I mean, I I just come like that's the thing is like uh let us should play it and it's like I don't know I mean this sounds good to play this sounds good to play and it's like I don't know because it's a hard thing because it's like I don't really like I know what to play but it's like I don't know would this be good to fit into a show or this would be good so but I got a handful of them yeah really handful. Mm -hmm. I, I think Chuck E. Cheese more because like with Rock of Fire, I, I, I gave a hat salt to the Rock of Fire fans for that one. So I yeah, I, I can't believe how the collection has grown over the years. I mean, we've got quite the catalog um, of not only actual shows, but just of songs. Um, so um, whether it be in a medley or, you know, a song by itself, just the sheer amount of music that we have over the past 40 years is, uh, I mean, it's, it's certainly something to be celebrated. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. I really do agree. It's, it's amazing. It's how amazing how you and the whole guy, a whole game, the mafia really accomplished to get all this stuff together and, you know, without you guys help, we wouldn't really be here today learning all this stuff of of new song she's lost media, like programming stuff. And from seeing you testing it, it's like, man, like just seeing how it is. And like I know for a fact, like, okay, Jasper and Raton are in a different position. And it would be a pain to move them over because let's say you play a piece like theater show, Chucky will have to look into Jasper's direction, unless the programming will be like weird. Like, but that's also the, the magic of digital software with sure. just a couple clicks of a button. Yeah. One can invert that signal um, to yeah. uh, to go and do that. Right. And to see how the program Blue is really accomplished, really, it, it's just truly amazing. And get props to you guys so like very much for the hard work and effort you guys put into. So, I mean, I just, I just, click buttons and and you know and tell uh david what bugs are uh kind of plaguing the system right. um but um you know david is uh really put all of his heart and soul blood sweat i don't know if tears i don't he doesn't he's not much of a crier but um <laughs> um he uh he he really has um his passion for this art 
definitely shows in his work. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I, I totally agree. All right. Well, be, before we end it off here, just one final thing. What what do you see the future holds for the Dog Dead and Duke's Junkyard and just basically the animatronics and all the other stuff? Um, well, uh, the future for, for Jasper's Dog Den is, um, the kind of reality is that I'm just in a little condo. Um, so, um, the, um, the future is hopefully, uh, moving to a house and a bigger space. (laughs) Um, so not even... Um, you know, the goal is never to necessarily expand. Um, you know, I don't, I don't wake up every morning and and say, you know, how can I expand the dog den today? But um, just through um, just natural progression, stuff has kind of expanded. Um, so just um, a bigger space to enjoy um, what I have with more room um because if anybody's been here um they'll know it is kind of a cramped space (laughs) um and um but that that would ultimately be the goal to have more room uh to spread your legs and um to have more than two or three people in in the in, in this kind of space at a time um and um that would be kind of the the ultimate goal right 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 gotcha, gotcha um yeah um but uh you know you never know who who comes and and visits the dog den character wise so there's there's always surprises yep surprises everywhere on the horizon <laughs> so uh even surprises for me so i'm just as surprised as you guys are <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and definitely I had to make a trip one day to definitely come down there whenever that'll be, hopefully soon. Come on down. As soon as you pay the plane ticket, then Tim will talk. I don't even want to pay for my own plane tickets. <laughs> don't worry, I'll get Brandon to discuss all that. Call me, yes, call Brandon. Okay, sure. Brandon, if, <laughs> Brandon, if you're watching this, because right now he's making a face. So, <laughs> um, so. Brandon, if you're watching this, set it up. Please. <laughs> oh, brother. Anyway, um, but thank you again, Jacob, for uh, joining on in. I know we've been trying to do this for a while. It's uh, crazy. I know, my, my crazy work schedule. But yes, thank you yeah. for having me. It's been very, very fun. Of course. It's always a pleasure. You know, been having, I think it's been like, what, two years or so, and then finally doing this? Yeah, something like that. But yeah never give up <laughs> well thank you again folks for joining on in this interview thank you again for jacob Jake, where they can find you at actually um you can find me at all sorts of places instagram for the most part um i'm on tiktok now which is a constant up and down battle as to whether i should or shouldn't um but um so definitely instagram's the main place to find me um and TikTok and YouTube. Yes, and YouTube as well. Yeah, he did have some has some interesting videos as well. Hopefully, we can see him back on YouTube again with the the dog did and the other animatronics. Yes. So, and uh, I'll see you on the live stream. <laughs> yeah. Also, are you gonna release more of these dog did merch? Yeah, at some point. So uh, you actually you're lucky enough to have the the entire complete cup collection true true i just have the magnet on the fridge so so um yeah cups the cups the second version is and it's in the works oh okay i can't wait for that to be released so definitely i'll be on the lookout for that thank you again folks for joining on in make sure you like comment subscribe share with all your friends and until then and then the, ah, i forgot until then in the meantime between time We'll see y'all next time for the next episode of Chucky's Talk Show. Jacob, send them up. What are we? <laughs> we. <laughs>